The following presentation was recorded by View Digital Media at the inaugural Southeast Linux Fest in Clemson, South Carolina on June 13, 2009. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit southeastlinuxfest.org. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about how open source software can narrow the digital divide. So, all right, so what is this digital divide thing? What, what are we talking about here? Um, it refers to the gap between those who benefit from technology and those who don't. Um, it includes the imbalances of physical access to technology, as well as the imbalances in resources, money, education, um, exposure, skills. Um, we're talking those of us who have and those of us who have not. Go on to the next. Uh, we have some, some various statistics here. Um, in 2004, less than three out of every 100 Africans used the internet, compared with an average of one out of two inhabitants in the G8 countries. Um, the U.S. has more than twice as many internet users as the remaining 42 countries in the American region put together. Two out of every three white, white students, or 67%, use the internet, but less than half of blacks and Hispanics do, according to federal data released, and this is, I think, in 2004. Um, for Hispanics, the figure was 44%. For blacks, it was 47 And according to a, a census in 2001, 43.7% of U.S. households don't have a computer. When we take a look at those statistics put together, the numbers combined lead us to believe that technology is rare, even for those of us who have, um, even the, in, for those of us in the, the G8 countries where we're developed in developing. Um, technology is a rare resource. And so a large portion of our globe does not have access, for some reason, to technology. Go on. So who are we and what do I have to do with this, right? Um, I'm Michelle, that's Michael. We're from Lakeland, Florida. It's a little kind of podunk town in between Orlando and Tampa. There's the I-4 corridor, there's Disney, there's the beach. We're smack dab in the middle. Um, we live in one of the poorest counties in Florida. Our, our um, school board is drastically underfunded. Our average teacher salary is $23,000 a year. Average teacher salary, that's the teachers that have the master's degrees, that have the tenure, that have the experience that they make an average of $23,000 a year. We are, uh, we've been married for six years, plus a little bit of change now, and we are the proud parents of those two youngins sitting over there. Um, our little boy is Quinn, he is five. Our little girl's Ainsley, she's three and a half. Um, at 21 months old, our son Quinn was diagnosed with pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified. It's about this long, and it basically means that our son's a weird child. It is what it is. It is an autism spectrum disorder. Um, statistic for you. Autism and autism spectrum disorders affect one out of every 150 children and approximately one out of every 96 boys. Chances are there's a large group of autistics, high-functioning autistics and Asperger's individuals here with us today, including our son. Um, how we kind of got involved in this whole open source business, um, at three and a half, we couldn't drag Quinn away from Michael's computer. Um, he is not an active child. He does not enjoy going out and playing. Um, he is physically uncoordinated. He does not like to run. He's very intelligent. He would just as soon sit down with a book. He's five. He reads at a third and a half, third and a half grade level. Um, he wanted to be on Mike's computer. Wanted to. That's where he wanted to be. Okay, well, we cater to him, to his needs, and that's one of the things that he enjoys doing. So we agreed to allow him computer time. But when he sat down to a regular computer screen, he had menus he had to navigate. He had icons all over the place. He had all of this garbage. And for him, it was entirely too visually overstimulating. He went, ah! And we went, uh, no. So um, we started looking, and we couldn't find anything that would do. We, we weighed uh, a Windows environment, and, well, that stunk. Um, we looked at a standard Ubuntu-based environment, and that was still more than he could handle. At that point, he wasn't literate. Michael came and he said, you know, we could do this ourselves. And I said, all right, whatever. You have fun with that. 
Um, so we, in, we put together this, this simplified version of Ubuntu. Everything's across the bottom in a nice little launcher. So that when the child sits down and looks at the computer, there's a window or a, a screen. He sits, and everything that he wants is across the bottom. There's no reading necessary, none, none, none of that. So, okay, we put this with Quinn, and he thought, hey, this is cool. And then we installed it on some secondhand computers for our daycare and uh, passed a couple off to, to some of our friends with small children, um, and everybody loved it. And we went, hmm, this is interesting. After we received feedback from the kids, Mike realized that we were onto something kind of bright. He said, honey, um, you know, what would you think if we did this more often? And I said, all right. I did what I always do. My grandmother told me if you're gonna, if you're gonna do something, go big or go home. And so we did, and, and I founded a charity. Um, 501c3 is pending. We're, we're still working on getting uh, all of that taken care of. It's expensive to file. Um, we decided that we would recycle old computers and place them in households in our community. Uh, the families would either be low income and at risk, we're talking kids with incomes uh, very minimal, or children who, like Quinn, have special needs. Those kids are often overlooked, and it's a tragedy. Go on. Let me tell you a little bit about some of my children that we've placed computers with before we go on. Um, we've worked with a community of migrant children in our local community. Um, we live next door to the... Uh, the strawberry capital of the South. Um, I don't know, you've probably eaten some Plant City strawberries. The workers that, that migrate in when those strawberries come to season uh, are migrant workers. They tend to be um, Hispanic. And those households have monthly incomes of less than $200 a month. Two, zero, zero. There's not an extra zero there. There's no comma. There's no nothing. We're talking $200 a month. Those families, if they had wanted to buy a computer for their children, could not have at all. I was invited to the Great American Teach-In. I went and spoke about what we were doing with the charity to the kids. And we offered those children an opportunity to write a paper. These were fourth grade children. To write me a paper that said what they wanted to be when they grew up and how computers could help them do that. We chose 13 of those papers and gave each one of those children computers. We've done this uh, for six months now. We've already placed, I've forgotten how many computers. Eight, 18, no. Well, with the 12 from Crossville, we're at, at about 30. Um, I got one paper back from a little girl. She's a, a little Mexican girl. She was the first generation of her family to go to school at all. She's in fourth grade. Could barely read and write English. She's learning English as a secondary language. Mom and dad are migrant workers. She wrote me this paper. She said, Mrs. Hall, I want to be a teacher when I grow up. My mommy and daddy are field workers. And my mommy's always told me that she wants me to, to grow up with enough that I can have a better job so that I can get out of the field and make her proud. How I could morally read that paper and not give that child a computer, I don't know. So she received one, and she's well on her way. My friend, the teacher in that classroom, called me a few days ago um, with the kids' FCAT scores. You're probably not familiar with the FCAT. It's the Florida um, assessment test that all the kids have to take. Her class of children came up 18% this year. One of that class of 22 did not pass that test. Every single one of them, the rest of them passed. I am so proud of those children. But as we were getting started with this, we realized that we weren't the first organization to use Linux and open source to help bridge this divide between ourselves and these other kids. Um, there are some you may know, the, the Helios Project, the Free Geek Project. And even as we speak in the ballroom next door, Free IT from Athens is discussing their project. They're currently trying to install a technology center in North Charleston, South Carolina. Others you may not know, uh, AWOL is from Atlanta, and the I Can't Even Pronounce It Cyber Club. They are in the panhandle. They are working with 4-H kids, um, teaching the 4-H kids to rebuild and install, and then place those computers that those 4-H kids did with younger kids. It's a fabulous movement. 
and countless other individuals working one computer at a time, making an effort to change the lives of children. There's one here, there's one there, there's one all over the place, there's one in your community. Everywhere we looked, there was someone. But how many individuals and groups exist doing the same sort of work that we don't know about? How can you find someone in your area who's already doing this? How can you start one in your own community? There were no resources, there was no sense of community, there were no common goals. So, being of the nature that I am, we decided to put together that set of resources as well. And we've rolled out growingupfree.org. It's not another charity, it's not, um, it's not an organization, it's just a gathering, a place for charities and individuals all over the world to pass out information, to obtain resources, and form connections between the open source community and the community at large. We are uh, making an effort to reach out. Growing Up Free as a community encourages you to find organizations that are nearest to you so that you can contribute to their efforts. Um, to uh, let people who want to help or need your help find out about your organization should you have one. Okay, so you have this little org. How do people find out about you? Mm, I don't know, word of mouth, that seems to be the way we do it, but that's kind of silly because then you're, you're working with one person at a time and waiting on that trickle down effect. So here we are, you know, with a, a system in which you can let others find out about your organization. You can request for help, you can request donations. You can say, hey, I have a plethora of 72 monitors in my back shop, I need somebody to take them off my hand. And the organization three cities over can go, hey, you know what, I need monitors, let's coordinate. We can tell people about your project so they can contribute time, money, or hardware. You can say, hey, listen, I am running this project. I'm doing a 12-seat computer lab in Hickville, Tennessee. And somebody can say, hey, you know what, I'm around the corner. Let me come over and help you. You can share your knowledge and experience with others and help them get started and avoid common pitfalls. Let me tell you, it is expensive to file a 501c3 uh, paperwork system from, from the IRS. In order to be able to be tax deductible, you have to have one. Well, it's just the two of us. I don't have a spare $600 lying around. Wish I did. It's expensive. You might want to know that before you decide to run your own organization. I can tell you that now. Why the open source community? The digital divide isn't just about having a computer. It's about having accessibility and knowledge. Having a computer is one thing, but having access to education and skills is a completely different problem. Open source software doesn't put up those obstacles. It doesn't say, okay, you have to have a license, you have to have permissions in order to be able to use this stuff. You want it, it's yours. Here, take it, do what you will with it. Those that cross the digital divide on open source software become members of our community and helping them helps us. Let me tell you, that computer over there still dual boots. I still run Vista, sorry. However, I went from not touching this thing called Linux to running an open source based charity in the span of six months. Talk about jumping in feet first, but that's okay. Because now the community, the open source community is helping me, and in turn I turn around and help them as well. Have I gone on? Oh, I have gone on. Growing Up Free is a new site. There's much to be done. It's still sort of in its infancy. Um, you take a look at it and it's still kind of rough around the edges. Um, and we need help. We desperately need help. If you know of, of charities and organizations in your community that are much doing the same sorts of projects, please add them to our wiki so that we can get in touch with them, so that you can get in touch with them, so that Joe around the corner can get in touch with them. List current and future projects. If you're working on a project, please create a page for them so that we know. Um, use Growing Up Free to promote them. You send out a mailing. Perfectly fine with that. That's what it's there for. Create pages for ideas, advice and references. Hey, if you have a brilliant idea, our loco in Florida is getting ready to do um, a build day where we're bringing in at-risk teens from the community 
providing them with all of the hardware and the software and saying, okay, this is how you build it yourself. This is something that we're working together on. If you have a brilliant idea, add it. Who knows who might come up and say, hey, this is a good idea, let's get on it. The wiki is open for community contributions. But my goal is not to promote my projects. These are my pet things. Um, we encourage you to join in. Hey, we encourage you to throw money in our general direction. That's, that's fabulous. But our goal here today is to encourage you as individuals and organizations to give back to the community at large, to use open source as a means for giving back. The benefits are vast, not just for those that you contribute to, but also for yourself. We know, we know you have to give your time. We know that time is, is of the essence. We know that it's something that you may not have a lot of. Believe me, I'm a stay-at-home mom with two little ones. My free time is limited, but there is nothing quite like handing a computer to a child who's never seen one. Watch that child sit down behind the screen, put his hand on the mouse, click a button, and see the lights come on. There's nothing like realizing that you've just opened a door for that child, an opportunity that chances are he may have never had. There's nothing quite like watching a single mom for the first time sit down at a computer and realize that she can complete her coursework so that she can go back to school and that she can better the lives of her children. I watched one mom ball when I handed her a computer. I couldn't have done this without you. Thank you so much. I don't know what to say. I cried too. But there's nothing like that. And you know, the time and resources that I spent in order to give that to her were absolutely worth it. I don't even know what he's going on about over there. You can go on. As we make a, an effort to close the digital divide, we also make our presence in the community stronger. Um, as an open source community, this is beneficial to us. Because as I hand a computer equipped with open source software to a mother who couldn't have otherwise afforded a computer, when she speaks to her, her friend at school or at work, she's going to say, hey, listen, you know, I have this computer. It didn't cost me anything. I can get this software. You can use it at home, too. And it doesn't cost you anything either. And so she hears about open office. And so she talks to the next one. And she talks and she talks and she talks and she talks. And suddenly we have an influx of women or gentlemen or children as they come up that wouldn't have otherwise heard about open source software that are now contributing back to our community. It is our firm belief uh, that as we grow as a charitable resource, we will promote open source software in the community at large and thus encourage the development of that open source software. They'll give back to us because we gave to them. La la la, hello. This is our vision. This is, this is why we do what we do. Um, we dream of a world in which a child does not have want of a computer. A world in which money, education, and resources are not a factor for a child's ability to have access to technology. We believe that every child, regardless of circumstance or disability, should have access to computer technology. We know that this is a lofty goal, and we strive to contribute as much as possible to that dream. We hope that you'll join us. However you feel fit, uh, in, in whatever circumstances you can, um, every child that, that we help is a life changed. Every wire crosses my shoulder. Um, who knows what these kids will grow up to be? That little girl, the one who told me that she wanted to get out of the fields, wants to be a teacher. She can grow up to be a teacher. She can grow up to teach the next Einstein. She can grow up to teach the next Stephen Hawking. One of those kids may be the next Einstein or the next president of the United States. I had one little boy tell me, that he wanted to be a new president or the next president because he was black like, a, like, like President Obama and that he hoped 
that using a computer that we gave him would help him accomplish that dream. He might well be. That's why we do what we do. That's why we contribute in our community. We encourage you to do the same. Um, if you don't know where to start, holler. Hey, you, up there, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. OK, well, I'll help you with that. You don't know what software to give a kid. Well, um, we have a customized distro for you to start with. Um, some of you may have heard of Chemo. Um, we put that together for our little boy. We're certainly willing to help. We encourage you to, to go out into your communities, to talk, to speak with each other, to form connections, and to make an attempt to change the lives of kids, change the lives of those in your community, change the lives of the world at large, and see what we can accomplish through open source. And now I think I have absolutely sped through my presentation. So um, I'd like to uh, maybe do sort of a, an open forum sort of thing. If you have questions or comments, um, you know, don't beat over, each other over the heads with a baseball bat to, to get in line, but um, certainly raise them in the back. kind of go back and revisit Kimo a little bit since we didn't really discuss. Um, Kimo is something that we designed so that we can put a distro on really old hardware. Um, we've been putting it out on, on 400 megahertz processors um, to send into, into homes. There's, there's a plethora of old hardware sitting around going to the dump that, that, needs, that something needs to be done with. It, it doesn't need to go and sit and, and destroy our ecosystem at the same time, you know, it, it's an opportunity waiting to happen for these children. Um, it's a distro that's really light, designed to, to be something that we can use to recycle old hardware and put out into whatever sort of community you should want to. Um, we designed Chemo quickly. Um, we designed it with just the two of us. He's the brains of the operation. I'm just the one that's the, 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 the promoter. Um, and so there are some things that, that we want to do. We, we don't have a, an internet filter on it at this point that's coming. Um, there are some other sort of customizations that we want to do that we just haven't had the time for. Um, he has to work a full-time job. And so when he comes home at night, it's, it's bath time, it's dinner time, it's bedtime for the little ones. And by the time we get all of that done, we're looking at you know, 7.30, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock by the time we eat dinner oh, hey, it's 10 o'clock and time to go to bed and start the day over again. And so maintenance has been something that has been lagging, and we're aware. Um, it's on the to-do list. What can I say? My to-do list is, is 47 miles long at this point. But to let you know, we are planning on including an internet filter in uh, the next version of Kimo. We also still provide a lot of uh, programs that adults can use, like Abby Word. Um, when we set these computers up that we're giving out, we set up two user accounts, one for the kids and one for the parents. 
So we have tried to include as many of those as possible. We've been restricted by the CD size. We want everything to be run on a single CD. So we've had to strip out a few things to make that happen. Right. We're also planning on doing an alternative install CD in the next version. So if you have a computer with less than the minimum amount of RAM needed to run a live CD, you can still install them. That's also, like you said, on the to-do list. Um, any other questions? I saw some other hands, so don't be shy. Who's the shirt? Quick question. How do you spell Q I M O. My email, should you want it, is Michelle at Kimo the number four kids dot com. Kimo for kids dot com. You can find us. In my personal experience, my wife's been teaching for 30 years. It sort of became a habit over the years. And I would have stuck that over and figure out a way to find somebody or kid or class and you know, quietly get them computer so that not everybody is jealous or something like that. And, uh, she taught a very diverse uh, school for a long time. And same thing with school. I was in George, Georgia, that's everybody else. Mm -hmm. Well, she had a uh, Saturday school group for the Hispanic kids. Uh, and if they came on Saturday, the book, they would get to put their name on the name of the job because mm -hmm. they had to bring a parent. So it's important. So, so the parent had to be committed to not only get to the but also be there to watch what's going on. And we would, you know, at the end of the five, if you came on the Friday, you're in the end of the five. have a, a large workshop in our backyard. We don't have basements in Florida. Everything under the ground is underwater. But we have a large workshop where everything gets hoarded away. And yes, I, I have been keeping everything that comes in. That's why we're trying to do Growing Up Free, so that you can go onto the forums and say, hey, listen, I've got six motherboards. I need power supplies. And Joe Schmo down the street just happens to have them. And his wife is e -e 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 at, a, at him about getting rid of them. Yeah, he can say, oh, hey. You know, I can give them to you, and then together we can we can give these to these kids. Where are y'all from, Florida? We are from Lakeland, um, right smack dab in the middle. We'll have it in Tampa, um, which is about a, a 20 minute drive for us, but it puts us in a little bit larger city where we have more uh, accessibility, um, where we can get more more people to come in and join. Okay. Please put yourself on the website. Right. Um, and we, we've got members. Are, are you part of the Ubuntu Loco? Um, okay, well, we're coordinating a lot of it through the Ubuntu Loco also. And I know we've got members up and around there. So if there's interest, we can get something like that going up your area also. Yeah. Yeah. I'm certainly happy to coordinate. There's more. There's more. Um, any other questions? I'm early. I'm sorry, I was late. Is this, this was a distribution that you yourself? Kimo is, yes. It's based on uh, Xubuntu. Um, all I've done is I've customized the default desktop settings and some of the, the games that get included on the CD. So it's a desktop Yeah, it's XFCE. Uh, it runs better on the, the 400 megahertz computers. And we gave it a nice, pretty desktop, something friendly for, for the kids to see. Um, when you're looking at it, you'll see our little Eskimo friend, our little Inuit. Um, 
He stands in the middle of, of a little ice field. And that's all there is. He's friendly, he's engaging, but he's not so incredibly overwhelming that the kids can't focus on anything else. Um, we've actually had quite good success with, with the kids with our little camo. He, he's friendly and, and fun and outgoing, and he's kind of developing a, per, a, person, a persona of his own. He has his own uh, Facebook page, for example. Um, he's just our little buddy. And um, his name, there, there's a little bit of a story to his name. Um, our son is Quinn. Um, Bob Dylan wrote a song about Quinn the Eskimo. The, the day he was born, we started singing it to him, and it just kind of stuck. And so when we started looking for a name and a character to go with our little distro, um, an Eskimo was born. Uh, we replaced the, the cuff sound with a Q, and it became Kimo. And he's our little pal. So. Um, please go go and check out Kemo. Um, if you know of, of a little boy or girl down the street who you think might like it, there's uh, a live CD downloadable from the website. Download it, burn it, pass it along. Um, can't hurt. Kids can't break things. It's phenomenal. It's Kemo for kids. Q I M O the number four. Kids.com. Andor. Andor. Or no, is it or? It's both. Does it have or? Okay. Uh, I don't know. You can download it from the website. Um, that's that's about it all, all for Kemo. Um, just Quinn the Eskimo. Any other questions? Anyone? Anyone? The, what we recommend is at least 400 megahertz processor. If you're going to run it uh, from the live CD, you need at least 256 megs of RAM. Um, that's been the biggest hardware requirement so far. Uh, if you're just going to install it, you need 192, because we're still using the graphical installer. Hopefully, when we get the alternative CD made, we'll be able to bring that down to about 64 megs level. And about a 6 gig hard drive. Mm -hmm. And about a 6 gig hard drive. Any other? If we've got time, we can bounce some ideas. Yes. Some other folks have probably discovered this too. When I've been trying to get the longest life I can out of the machine, the older, the newest thing for me is you can't find it. You can't find it for older speeds. And, you know, so if you can find it, it's very difficult. So I guess that's the other trick of uh, why I said, well, go. Find some space, don't throw anything away because as sure as I throw something away, I'll need it six weeks or eight weeks later. Mm -hmm. Get to know the guys at your local electronics recycling facility. Um, they might be willing to work with you. We've been uh, experimenting with some connections at our local dump of all places. Um, they are, they've agreed to do a one-for-one -one exchange for us for uh, cords. I take them an old Bia cord, they get a new power cable. I, that's phenomenal because most of the, uh, the the computers that come to us don't have power cables. Well, what am I going to do with a box that doesn't have power cable? Um, so they're exchanging with us. And I've, I've gotten good success from want ads of all places on Craigslist, um, as well as our local FreeCycle community. I don't know if you're familiar with FreeCycle. Um, there's a, a whole network of organizations called FreeCycle. Uh, they're online. They're basically a, a Yahoo group at this point. Um, there should be one for your local area within driving distance. Um, you post a want ad. You say, hey, listen, I'm looking for X, Y, and Z. And the people email you and say, hey, I have it. Come and get it. And it's phenomenal. Um, I've gotten good success, boxes of things from you know, listings. I say, OK, this is who I am. This is what I'm doing, and this is why. Please go visit my website. And if you feel so inclined, let me know if you have donations. And I make arrangements to go and get them. Yes, that means that I put the kids in the car and haul them to two cities over. Yeah, okay, so be it. We eat lunch at the Chick-fil-A, you know. Um, those sorts of things. There, there are little places that you can sort of feel out for donations from. And we've been surprised at the, the good amounts of success that we've, we've gotten um, just from those places. eBay, always there. Yeah, you might pay through the nose for your RAM, but at least you can get it. Mm -hmm. 
it may be a case of here's a box of all of this old stuff. I don't know what it is. Sort it out. See if it works. Uh, our opinion is you hand me a box of old stuff, I will take care of it. Thank you very much. Works or not. Well, that's the same thing again. He had to go from these late people who didn't yep. really, they weren't really tired by it. And he wanted to do it in one of the rooms, and they had about 10 to 20 machines stacked up. You know, there was an IBM CS1 in there. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, that's the thing. Yeah. But they were, they were also two and twos in there, and I was thinking there may have been some more of a bigger machine, but we just took, to, uh, took the dump of it. It's also just a uh, United Way. Yeah. Um, talk with your local teachers if you want to, to put computers with kids. Kind of feel out your teachers at your church or you know at your local local facilities, where, wherever they might be, and say, okay, this is what we're doing. We're kind of looking for kids, and then start picking them out and sending them in your direction. And you start hearing, you know, okay, this kid could really use a computer. Mom and Dad can't afford it, or this child has been diagnosed with cerebral palsy and needs needs intervention, they'll start hearing that sort of trickle and suddenly you'll have a waiting list of kids for computers. We have one that I think still sits at 20 kids along at this point. Um, there are those, those people that know how to find the kids that you need or, or how to find the adults that you need or if there's a, an abused women's shelter in your local area, you know what, they might like to have a a four lab computer lab, or four person computer lab, because those moms are looking for, you know, how to get online to find a job. How to type a resume. You can't get a job without having a resume. Well, if you don't have a computer and you're in a situation where you don't want to be, you know, at the public library, typing a resume is a big deal. Yes. Donating computers from corporations is an interesting sort of project. Um, a lot of them that we've run into, at least, already have pre-established contracts for recycling their computers. Okay, this generation of computers needs to go out. We have a contract with either the supplier or uh, a local organization. Um, those are kind of hard, you know, hard things to feel out to start with. But as you kind of get get productive in your community, you start getting a tie-in here and a tie-in there, and suddenly it's it's become, oh, now I have a contract with Publix, and I can get their next generation of computers. It's not something that we can do right off the bat, I was but just yeah. They were helping out their local a Absolutely. Lot them, a lot of them are also looking for a 501c3 to oh, donate okay. to, and we're we're still working. We're on still working on that. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's part of what I asked you was you had you got your your status here as a charitable. Design. It's still pending. Um, if, if, like I'm connected to the church, is there any issue with, uh, it wouldn't be directly to the church, but using that shelter of the church, having them donate to the church, and still familiar with that way? Is there I'm not sure. Um, I'm, I'm not a, an accountant by any stretch. I'm, I'm just now starting to figure out the inner workings of the IRS. Lord help me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. That would definitely be something that you would want to speak with. No, that's fine. Please contribute. You can go to the pastor, whatever, the governing body of the church, the elders, the deacons, or whatever, and have them authorize you as a project to give it to the church. And the church can use it for their purpose. Yeah. As long as, it, yeah, I would think that as long as it was something that the church was doing, you know, as a church project, it has to be a church exactly. Mm -hmm. But there's another place where we've gotten a lot of support is from our local church Absolutely. members in the church. Uh, we just recently held a big build day where we built 13 computers and we held that in our fellowship hall at our church. That was one of my next ideas was possibly use that as an educational tool to teach the kids. Yeah. Absolutely. Sort of Saturday activity mm -hmm. and 
Uh, that's what our loco is planning on doing is, is doing a, a Saturday activity where we're mentoring those you know those selected kids through building their own computers uh, we, no, we just talked we about are targeting that the last second or third week of August um, the the last couple of weeks before summer break ends when all of the camps has, have closed down and, and the kids are bored and have nothing to do all right I've apparently got a, a two-minute warning so um, <laughs> thank you guys so very much if you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to ask or email me. Um, I usually check my email about once every couple of hours, so I, I'm, I tend to be on the ball with that at least. Um, please email. Please don't hesitate to call. Let me know if there's anything that I can help you with. If you decide that you want to try and do this in your own communities, I will certainly help um, in terms of organization or advice. Um, don't be afraid to holler. This work was recorded by VIEW Digital Media and is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike version 3.0. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit southeastlinuxfest.org.